Today we're going to talk about my four or five top five favorite Harbor Freight tools. Now I'll tell you what guys, even a year ago, six months ago, uh, if you would have asked me my, my opinion of Harbor Freight tools, it wasn't super positive. That would have been a big no for me because I haven't had good experience with them. I haven't found them to be consistent or of very high quality, just replicas and cheap replicas at that of, of good tools. Well, that's changing a lot with this Apex stuff. I put a pretty good workout on that 12,000 Apex Badlands wench yesterday. And so today I wanna to talk about the accessories, the top accessories that you should have with that. And that's a retrieval kit. My original Harbor Freight tree strap the 6400 right here, that which has served me for years. I actually bought four of them. I used them all in the off-grid place. Even left them outside for winter, I think. <laughs> They're still still going strong. But this is, I've always thought, was has been a, a, a great strap, but a bit narrow. But contrast that with the, the new Badlands strap. I have a very unsuitable table here. Look at this thing. Now that is a serious tree strap. And our rating went up from 6,400 pounds to 10,000 pounds and 30,000 pounds breaking strength. That is a big one and a lot longer. The, the other one was not useful to me in so many applications. And sometimes I've had to use two and three because it was just too short. But this is a wonderful strap. And the price is really good too. I contrasted the tools at the end. I'm gonna show you the whole kit that I put together and to duplicate this with a worn, it was $469 and you can have essentially the same thing for right around $100. Huge, huge, a quarter of the cost, right? So it's worth taking a look at. So this is the tree strap, very, very nice hand. You could use it for a toe strap, anything, but I would highly recommend this. It is a really, really nice item. Second is New Badlands, the, the snatch block. How much do you think this costs? It's not cheap, it's not crummy. You know, you look at the components, it's got big, heavy snap rings, uh, thick steel, it's cadmium plated, it's got a big eye opening so you can run your chain hooks through it. It's a really nice block. I remember these things being so expensive when I was a kid. I had a winch on my, my first truck, four by four, was a 77 Bronco. That was the last year of the old body style with a 302 in it. It was orange with white fender flares and a white top. And I was working at Warren at the time and I got a second hand winch and I put it on there. And I loved that so much. I didn't have any money to buy a retrieval kit, but I did have a metal shop class in high school. And I spent a summer building two of these from scratch. Uh, I t t pulled the, or I made the wheels on the, on the lathe, uh, did the side plates, uh, did the whole, it took forever. I made two of them. And the first time I used them, uh, they weren't strong enough and they broke. <laughs> after hours in the machine shop, but this is a very nice unit, 29 bucks. So with this and the big tree strap, these two pieces here were only at 60 bucks. I and mean, that's a really great deal. You, I mean, these things are really expensive and, and I used it yesterday to the capacity of that Badlands Apex and no problem, no problem at all. I mean, there's what can go wrong with them, right? So I would highly recommend the snatch block. This is part of the retrieval kit. Next up is the Badlands shackles right here. So these are, what are these things? Three quarter inch, really heavy duty, nice shackles. And I used these yesterday on the stash block as well. And they've got a good coating on them. So they don't, they, it's almost like a bearing surface. They don't rust, they don't kind of hang up all that much. And I didn't have any problem. Again, I put both of them under load when we pulled that old truck out of the, out of those Aspens and no signs, no problems. Uh, it's a, a, a great tool, no, no question about it. So I get a pair of these. So right there, I mean, that really makes up your retrieval kit. Once you have a winch of some sort, you want a pair of these. These are 25 bucks a piece. So 50 bucks get you a pair of really nice heavy duty shackles that you can do anything you're gonna need to do with. You're not gonna break these guys. So our retrieval kit, let's add it up. Keep it simple for our East Coast friends. So we have 29 bucks right there. We got 60 bucks right there. And we've got 50 bucks. So that's 110 bucks roughly for an entire retrieval kit uh, that will do what you need to do. You add this to your winch and you have all sorts of capabilities. And it's, I mean, it's a great value. I'll even put a picture up here on the side, right here online, you can see there is the worn kit. And that essentially is the same thing. Maybe they're a little bit nicer, but 
I don't know that they're, they're nice enough to justify that $459 price range or whatever it was compared to our $110 price range. So I'm all for it. I'm all about it. Um, I know Harbor Freight's coming out with some soft shackles as well. And these things are the real game changer. To get away from those big, big heavy ones is kind of nice. They have their place. Sometimes that's the only thing that will work. But I think if you just have a light truck and you just want to have a basic retrieval kit, having something like this is a lot nicer. It's a lot safer. You don't have all that mass. And if you haven't seen them, they're just essentially there's a like kind of a, I don't know what they call that knot. Like it's, it looks kind of like a monkey fist or something, but you can go around anyone's car or their frame or tow hooks and you pull this tight and now you have a really strong soft shackle that if something were to break or it flies through the air, you're not going to have any problems with it uh, whatsoever. So there you have it. That's it. I think it's a great, great value and I have been using it this week and I, I highly, highly recommend it. Very nice kit. I'll share with you my one final thought here or one final story of uh, a winching fiasco that I had when I was younger. So I was 19. It was my first year taking my Ford Bronco to the elk hunting, the big elk hunting family trip. Now elk hunting for us was always at the end of October, October 31st. And opening morning was the big day. And my granddad and I, we would go out at night and we would glass in the evening, as he called it. We would sit on the edge of the canyon up in Hell's Canyon and we would look and see and try to find the herd. Once we found the herd, if we found it, uh, we would put it to bed. I mean, we would wait there until dark because typically they would bed down that night. And if you got up really early the next morning, you could see them rising and keep an eye on them. And we would keep an eye on them for the day so that when opening morning came, we knew exactly where to hunt. That's the way we did it. Opening morning comes. We know where the herd is. I decide to, uh, I'm gonna go down and push up from the bottom. Granddad and some other friends are gonna be up here and we'll do what we call the drive, where the young guys would go in the bottom of the canyons, drive across through the different draws of the canyon, jump out whatever's hiding in the thicket, and the men on top basically overwatch and because it was all about harvesting meat right that's how we that's how we did it back in the day so that was my job so most of the guys took off and, and headed down the canyon and I was uh, on my way out there to my spot and I found a road that went down exactly where I thought that I wanted to go and I figured well this will save me all sorts of time and I drove my Bronco and it was steep but I kept going down kept going down and several miles several miles I went down there before I got to a spot where there was a tree across the road and I couldn't go any further well, threw my pack board on, threw my rifle on, this is in the dark, right? Jumped out, headed on down to my spot to get ready to start the draw at daylight, right? Well, I wasn't maybe 15 minutes out of the truck, then the snow started to fall. And I thought to myself, you know, I probably ought to get that truck out of here before that snow falls, but what do you know at 19, right? I wasn't even a professional homeowner then. So I spent the whole day. Well, it proceeded to snow, and by the time, long story short, I got back to the truck, there was a good solid 16 inches on the ground. And do you think that I was getting out of that canyon miles deep with it continuing to snow and a forecast of snow for the rest of the week? I was not. I had a winch on the front. I started winching. About 80 feet, 70 feet at a time. There were a lot of trees, but it was steep. Pretty soon, the battery was shot. The battery wasn't big enough to run the winch. The winch was not designed for that. I had to leave it behind and start hoofing out. Walked out of that canyon in the snow, hitchhiked back to the elk hunting camp, and got my chains. Fortunately, I had chains for all four tires. Put the chains on my packboard, and I didn't have those light duty ones like you get from Les Schwab. I had the big proper ones, of course, you know, everything overbuilt. <laughs> I had big log truck chains cut down to fit my tires. Put them on the packboard. I don't know what that weighed, but I'm guessing all of 125 pounds. And got a ride back to that and started down there, put those chains on, and crawled up out of that hole over a period of about 24 hours, the combination of winching. <laughs> digging, uh, you name it. Lesson learned, lesson learned. So I don't know what that has to do with the video, but that was my worst wenching story ever. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers and we'll see you all on the next video. Have you put your hands in it yet? Put your hand in and tell me if it's cold.
How cold? Like ice cream uh, headache cold? Yes. They are enormous. Is it cold? Yeah, it's super cold. It's like a spring fed, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm going to eat a rock.